What's up guys, Adam Saxon, AKA Guy in a Cube. I hope you're having a great day. I've got another roundup for you like we do every Thursday. And if you're new here, be sure to subscribe for more great content. So let's dig in. First up is a blog post from Chris Webb from Across the Pond where he looks at web.contents, caching, and the exclude from cache key option inside of both Power BI and Power Query. So he looks at the effects of web.contents when you call that and how caching can affect performance. He goes through a bunch of options and things that he found. So be sure to check out this blog post if you're using web.contents and are concerned about caching and performance. Matt Allington has a blog post where he looks at how to extract tabular data from the Power BI service to Excel. This is made possible by way of the Analyze in Excel feature off of your data set inside of the Power BI service. The magic here comes from editing the actual ODC connection file that is created when you use Analyze in Excel, and he shows you how you can actually input an actual query to execute that and get that data into Excel. I've seen this a few times. This is a great way to actually extract some data for a data set into Excel if you don't necessarily want the overhead of connecting to the actual data source, or you may be in a location where that's not actually feasible, so this is a great way to be able to get that quickly. Also remember that all the links for the items I'm talking about are down in the description below, along with some bonus items as well. We had a new Power BI desktop update for January. One thing you may have noticed is we used to release Power BI desktop at the end of the month, but we didn't have a release in December, and that's because the cadence for the release updates have changed to earlier in the month. So our first release for the year is early January. In this release, there were several updates. For report view, we had table header word wrap, along with a few other items. For data connectivity, we had Visual Studio Team Services Connector, which is in beta, as well as an update for the SQL Connector where you can signal that you're using a failover cluster. I went to look at this, and this actually has to do with enabling multi-subnet failover along with application intent. So that's actually pretty cool. I've had a bunch of questions from people about the ability to actually support always on functionality, and this is a way you can do that. There were several other items included in this release, so be sure to check out the blog post for all of the items included in the January release. There was a blog post about how to embed Power BI reports into Salesforce. This actually used the REST API with the Power BI service as its example. This was not about Power BI embedded. The blog post walks through how to go through everything from authentication to actually embedding those reports into Salesforce itself. So if you're using Salesforce and you're interested in embedding Power BI reports into it, be sure to check out this blog post. It's a great walkthrough. There was an update for the Power BI mobile app where the phone reports are actually generally available now. That was included in the Power BI desktop update and they are supported inside of the mobile app as well. Along that, there were several other updates included in the mobile app, which includes scroll bar capabilities, which means you can add additional items as much as you want inside of that phone report layout. Also some options to collapse the header and footers for easier viewability and some data refresh enhancements into the reports. So check out the blog post, see everything that's in the update for the mobile app. Okay, those were my items for this week. As I mentioned before, the links for all the items I talked about, along with some bonus items, are down in the description below, so be sure to check those out. And I would love to hear your feedback about what items you were excited about this last week and or since the start of the year. And what are you looking forward to in 2017? Go ahead and leave that down in the comments below and let me know. If you like this video, be sure to give it a thumbs up. And if it's your first time here, be sure to subscribe for more great content. And as always, thank you so much for watching and keep being awesome.